Good day everyone. In these videos I'm going to be going over some of the things I've learnt with buying germanium transistors, which ones are good, which ones sound good, which ones to avoid, uh, what to look out for, and also um, some things about the Russian um, transistors because obviously the ACs and the um, PNs and o uh, OCs are, are hard to get um, these days so a lot of people are buying the Russian germanium transistors instead and um, I can give you a bit of uh, um, advice on those as well. Obviously I've, I haven't tried every single germanium transistor that there is that's available, it's just what I've sort of discovered in the last sort of 12 months since I've been buying them. So if you're in the market for a set of germanium transistors you'll notice that they push uh, the HFEs, you've got to have 70 to 85 in Q1, you've got to have 100 to 130 in Q in Q2 or Q3 for a tone bender. Um, how important is that? That kind of, when I, when I was first getting into germanium transistors, that, that kind of scared me a little bit. Um, you know, you've got, to, you've got to measure them, you've got to make sure they're right, otherwise the thing's not going to sound right and all that sort of stuff. But it's not as critical from what I've, what I've experimented with as I originally thought. I've had, I've had Q3s around 80 to 90 I've, or, or up to 200 and I still think they sound good. They might sound slightly different to what it sounds like between 100 to 130 but I mean I couldn't even decide which one I thought sounded better. They just sound a little bit different. Um, and likewise with Q1 and, and Q2 for a tone bender. Um, having, having as low as 50 um, sounds good too. Which brings me on to something else, which is the actual frequency response for a transistor. If you've done anything with guitar pedals so far, you've experimented with transistors in silicon, uh, in silicon circuits, you'd notice that changing one transistor, like in a booster, if you change from one model to another, you do get a slight different frequency response, and they all sound a little bit, a little bit different. The same goes for the germanium transistors. So it's not always about the HFE. The, I think that the frequency response is just as important. Unfortunately, with the frequency response, I mean, I wouldn't know where to look as far as what a good transistor should be in the frequency response is and what a bad one is. You pretty much just have to buy them and test them yourself with your own ears. And obviously, that's also going to change from circuit to circuit as well. But generally, I find that if you find one that sounds good in one circuit, it usually sounds good in all circuits. So what I'm saying is you can aim for 100, 100 to 130 HFE for a transistor or 70 to 85. But if the transistor doesn't sound good at, at all, um, you know, what's the point in using it? You might actually get better results using something um, that's lower gain or higher gain um, that actually has a good frequency response than using something that has the right HFE and doesn't sound that good. Now the other thing is the reported HFEs. You're going to see on the internet, you're going to come across germanium transistors that have the perfect HFE. You've got, you know, these transistors are 80 to 150 HFE and there's a box of 100 for 20 bucks and it's like, this seems good, too good to be true. So you might see a few threads of people um, talking about, um, you know, that I bought a box of 100 um, transistors, I measured them all and they're all 50 to 60 HFE um, and it should, they, the, the data, even the data sheet says they should be between 80 and 150 HFE you know like what's the story with that sometimes it can be a shunt resistor inside the transistor that actually uh, makes the transistor look like it's lower gain than it actually is um, but in my case I actually bought a box of GT308Vs and I found that they were all between um, uh, 60 and uh, uh, sorry, 50 and about 70 HFE instead of 80 to 150, uh, and I just couldn't work out why that was the case. I mean, if the data sheet says it's going to be between 80 and 150, you know, like why would the data sheet lie? Basically, the answer was pointed out by PRR. This was what I reckon is the correct answer. Um, basically, if you look at this chart, you can see uh, HFE um, measured against uh, collector current. And I was measuring with stomp boxes, it's usually very low collector current. Um, for instance, in, in my case, um, he's just quoted me up here, 437 four, microamps. So you're looking at half a milliamp. Um, 
half a milliamp on this scale down here is like you can see zero you're looking at 10 I mean you're pretty much looking at where zero is on this chart and if you go up you can see at zero we're kind of around the between 40 and 80 which is what I was pretty much measuring so they've quoted 80 to 150 HFE um, from where well, you're looking at sort of maybe 5 milliamps to um, th uh, you know 25 milliamps is probably around where 80 to 150 would be on this on this particular chart so that can obviously lead to arguments between the seller and the, and the buyer and I've seen some some threads where you know like obviously the, the customers upset because they were expecting a certain HFE but they've received something else um, and um, you know there's there's reports of people skimming off the good um, the good HFEs and selling off all the crap pretending that they're just random ones um, but the bo that, that, that box of GT 308 V's that I received was sealed it was a sealed box the data sheet had on it 80 to 150 and I wanted to know why they were not measuring at the right HFE and as I showed you on that chart it's because the collector current's low but all transistors aren't obviously like that if you can get the chart the HFE versus collector current chart um, it would be very beneficial because you can determine whether um, it's going to work for stomp boxes and I probably think you'd be looking at um, the collector current I'm pretty sure you'd probably be looking at maybe a maximum of about 1 milliamp or 2 milliamp tops um, ar around um, that sort of scale you've got to make sure that that, that chart is um, you know the HFE is in the right spot at, at that collector current so that's definitely something to look out for when you're buying them if you can get that data sheet to check um, and it does come up regularly I've bought other transistors MP21D is another one that's um, that's got probably has 80 to 150 HFE but you're not going to see it in a guitar pedal because it's not it's not it's not um, providing enough collector current to to, um, to you know open up the HFE so is the MP21D useless? Is it not worth getting? Well, not really, because the frequency response is actually quite good. Even if they, even though they measure between 40, 50, 55 HFE in Q1 and Q, in Q1 of a, phase, a fuzz face and Q1 and Q2 of a tone bender, they actually sound pretty good. They've got a good uh, full sort of full spectrum fr frequency response, and I was actually using them in quite a few um, guitar pedals. Um, for for the you know the low gain um, transistors and they sound actually pretty good. So how much is a good price to pay for a germanium transistor? Well, it depends on what you're buying first. I mean, if you're buying Russians, they're obviously going to be cheaper than if you're buying OC44s. You know, there's going to be a variance in price. I mean, five dollars for an OC44 might actually be a good price, whereas you know, fifty cents for a germanium transistor might actually be expensive. I like to keep track of what the actual unit cost is because it can get confusing and you can sometimes lose, you know, like um, uh, lose sight of what you're actually paying on particular transistors. You know, if you're buying two lots from one guy and the postage is this and 50 for this cost, etc., etc. So, like for instance, if I buy 100 um, transistors and they cost me $30, then it's going to cost 30 cents each. For Russians, I think 30 cents each is a pretty good price. Um, I think the most I've probably ever paid for Russians is maybe about 60 cents. It depends on the model, again, because there are some really good Russians and there's some not so good Russians. I'll go into more about the models and uh, the Russian models that I've found are good and the ones that I haven't found very good as well um, in the next video. So I think I'm going to end this video for part one and um, come back with another video or maybe two. Um, in, the, in the coming videos I'm going to be talking about the models that I've found to be the best, the best sounding models, the best HFE, um, ones to look out for that are just absolute garbage and um, uh, you know things like that. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching and if you found this video um, helpful, give us a thumbs up because it, um, it really helps me out. Thanks a lot.